high, he don't make mistakes. We don't want to slice, we gonna take the cake. And we can't wait until the kingdom come. You need reservations to get in them gates. I'm a soldier. I'm soldiers. I'm on the block with some soldiers. I'm talking precept holders. We can game up like soldiers. 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 We moving wiser than cobras. All right, y'all. Baraka, y'all. Bye, Shimmy. I was shy. Call if I pull off like y'all. Bye, Shimmy. I was shy. It's all praise to the most high God. Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, Soldier Sunday, we're getting back into another lesson. Today we're going to talk about salvation, and salvation is for Israel. We're going to prove that through precept upon precept. And it's a lot to go into, so we're going, to, we're going to just get straight to it and, you know, let's just do it. Let's go to, I need a reader. Anybody? Can I, can I read? All right, let's go to Psalms 14 and 7. Salah. Salah. Khan, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 14. What up? You said 14 in what verse? In verse 7. Oh, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 14 and verse 7. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out. Salah. So the salvation of Israel, right? It don't say the salvation to everybody. And every time we see the salvation, is going to be dealing with Israel. Go ahead. Come. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. Come, will come out of Zion when Yahweh bringeth back the captivity of his people. When Yahweh bring back the captivity of his people, because we're going to be in captivity. We're going to be under the opp oppression from these other nations. Right, so that's what salvation is. So the Israelites are going to be saved from that. Go ahead. Okay. The captivity of his people, Jacob, shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. I mean, that's when the Israelites will be happy because we we in a mourning state right now. Right, let's go to Matthew one and twenty one. I mean, we ain't none of us happy right now. We going through it. We at the bottom bottom of the bottom. You know, only a select few of us. Is claiming to be successful, you know, one out of you know every so-called white family, one out of seven of these so-called white families are are millionaires. You know, we don't see that in our community. I mean, we have not only financial worries, but we got you know worries that come with just being blacks and Hispanics. Go ahead. Okay. This is the book of Matthew, chapter one and verse twenty-one, and it shall, and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. for he shall save his people from their sins. And who's his people? And what 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 is saving them from their sins? Right. Let's go to Isaiah fifty and one. Because why is he saving us from our sins? What did our sins do to us? Come, okay. okay. this is the book of Isaiah chapter fifty and verse one. Thus saith Yahweh, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? When I have put put away, or which of my creations, oh creditors. Salaki, Salaki creditors, is it is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves. So for your sins, for our sins, we sold ourselves to these other nations because if we didn't keep these commandments, these curses was going to get put upon us. And a part of these curses was serving our enemies. Keep going. Okay. And for your transgressions, is your mother put away? Because of our sins, you know, the most high turn is back on us. Let's get Nehemiah 9 and 26. I mean, our sins got the Israel. The Israelite sins got themselves put into captivity. So we have to be saved from this captivity, redeemed out of captivity. Con, you, you said uh, 12. I said Nehemiah 9 and 26. Oh, so the book of Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 26. Nevertheless, they were disobedient. The were Israelites. Disobedient. It's the Israelites were disobedient. I mean, he was disobedient to these law, statutes, and commandments, 
and disobedience to the Most High. Go ahead. And rebelled against thee. We rebelled against the Most High. Okay. And cast our law behind their backs. They cast, we cast our the law behind our backs. That's why these curses got put upon us. That's why we was going through these things. That's the only time when these other nations can put us in captivity, put us in slavery. Keep going. Okay. And slew thy prophets which testify against them to turn them to thee and they wrought great provations provations provocations keep going provocations so like in verse 27 therefore thou deliverest them unto the hand of their enemies that's why we got delivered into the hand of our enemies that's why we became captives is because we stopped keeping these law statutes and commandments keep going who vexed them and in the time of their trouble when they cried unto thee thou heardest them from heaven mm -hmm. and according to thou manifold mercies thou givest them saviors because of the mercy of the most high god he gives us a savior and that savior is yahweh shah so-called jesus christ keep going uh, who saved them out of the hand of their enemies that's what salvation is being saved out of the hand of our enemies he did it before and he's going to do it again it's all repetitious mm. it's just going to happen again and this is the when so-called jesus christ comes back he's coming to save the israelites just like i did all these other times um let's go to luke 1 and 67. And how can we be saved with our oppressors? How can the oppressors be saved with the oppressed? How does that look? That's not being saved. And you don't see that happening. Come, come. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 67. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be Yahweh, power of Israel. Yahweh, the power of Israel, the Lord God of Israel. It doesn't say the Lord God of everybody. You know, this is in the New Testament. The Most High don't change. Yahweh Shah don't change. It's the God of Israel. Keep going. For he have visited and redeemed his people. His people. Uh, verse 67. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That horn of salvation, that that horn of salvation, that's Yahweh Shai. You know what I mean, and he's gonna raise up Yahweh Shai for us, for the Israelites. Go ahead, bro. Uh, verse seventy, as he speak by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved. New, you know what I mean, uh, that right, this, we, is, this is nothing new. You know what I mean? Oh, Salakia. There's a, there's a little delay in this, John Salakia. Um, keep going, bro. Con, con, that we should be saved from our enemies. We're going we gonna to be saved from our enemies. That's what that salvation is. Keep going. And from the hand of all that hate us. Uh -huh. Con, uh, verse 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. That that mercy to our fathers was the land, was the kingdom, eternal rulership. You know what I mean? Keep going. And to remember his holy covenant. That's keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. That's what that holy covenant is. Let's let's go to Psalms 2 and 8. This is what salvation is being saved from our enemies and coming back to the most high you know through keeping these laws statutes and commandments okay this is the book of psalms chapter 2 and verse 8 acts of me and i will give thee the heathen for thy heritage so if if he was going to give the heathen to us for an inheritance as a as a possession how are they going to be saved with us why why would they be a part of anything if they're just going to be a possession yeah. for an inheritance and the uttermost parts 
of the earth for thy possession. Even their land we're going to own. We're going to own everything on this earth, even them and their children. So why, why is that what salvation looks like for these other nations? If that's what you call salvation, then so be it, you know? But let's let's see, you know, that's an old testament. Oh, let's see what, what it's saying in the New Testament. Let's go to Revelation 2 and 26. No, Salakia, jump jump down to nine, Salakia. Okay. The book of Psalms, chapter two and verse nine. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So we was going to get the, the the heathen for a possession, you know, as an inheritance. Like, you know, when I pass away, you know, I have a will when I leave my 300 slaves to my children. They, you know, now they don't have to go get 300 slaves. They got it already. Right. So we're going to break these other nations. Right. And dash them into pieces. That's what's going to happen to these other nations. So so how was that including them? Right. So let's go to Revelation 2 and 26 and see. Let's see what that say. Con, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 26. Uh, start at 25. Oh, no, 26. Huh. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So nobody's going to be saved until, you know, you keep these works and endure until the end. You know, can't be saved until you get saved. And nobody's saved right now. Keep going. Con, verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. As as the vessels of, of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, mm -hmm. even as I received of my father. Right. So just like how Psalms, Psalms 2, that, that went right back to Psalms 2. Breaking these other nations, you know, as as a as a piece of pottery. That's what's going to happen. It ain't never changed. That's what the salvation. Of us is going to look like us taking rulership of this world straight from all these other nations all right so let's get um matthew 15 and 21. that can't be salvation for these other nations that's not what salvation looks like that's not how our salvation looks it looks like we're going to be saved from our captors if, if you call these other nations being saved by them going into captivity, you know, we're being saved from captivity and they're going into captivity. So if you want to call that a part of salvation, I mean, other than that, everything else is not biblical. Keep going. Matthew, Con, the book of Matthew chapter, Con, the book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21. Then Yahawashah went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidane. Verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. So a Canaanite woman came out of nowhere, right? So she approached you. How was she? A non-Israelite. And cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord. Yeah. She's begging. Yeah, you know I mean, she's begging for some help. So the Israelites, they look sick. Yahweh Shah come up and healed them. You know what I mean? Yahweh Shah was serving these other people, serving his brethren, serving the Israelites. And he was going to them and healing them. So this Canaanite woman came, slid across the floor like, please. You know what I mean? And and what happened? Con, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. So she, her, her daughter was going through it. She had a demon on her. Keep going. Turn. Verse, verse twenty three. But he answered her not a word. So Yahusha ignored her, man. Yahusha was going up to the to the to the sick on the Israelites. He was popping up on them and healing them. You know what I mean? He was going into their cities. This Canaanite woman begging for help, and he ignored her. Keep going. Turn. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying. Send her away, for she crieth after us. So the disciples knew it was up. 
disciples knew, like, yo, what is she doing here, man? We don't deal with you. I mean, get her out of here. You know I mean, it wasn't like, oh, the disciples knew that Yahweh Shah came for everybody. No, they knew who he came for. So let's go down to 24. Come, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yahweh Shah was only sent for the Israelites. That's why she, that's why he ignored her. I mean, that's why the disciples told her to get up out of here because they already knew who he came for. And that's the lost sheep of Israel. That ain't everybody. Keep going. Verse 26. Uh Salakia. No, verse verse 25. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. She's begging. She is begging for some help. He won't. Verse 26. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it unto dogs. What's the children's bread? Right? Let's go to John 6 and 48. He said, he said, it's not, it's not. I was going to say, I got, I got a precept that you done breaking it down. Okay. Okay. I mean, he said it, it wasn't me to cast this bread onto these, onto dogs, right? So he called her a dog on which she was a female. So he really called her a bitch respectfully. Right. Go ahead. The book of John chapter six and verse 48. I am that bread of life. How shy is that bread of life, man? You ain't getting nothing, man. She was asking for crumbs, man. That's all she got was some crumbs. You know what I mean? That's not, you know, if it, he came for everybody, he would have never treated her with a difference than he treats with the Israelites. You mean Christ don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and, and later on. So let's go to, um, you got a precept, bro? Uh, slot con, yeah, yeah, bro. Because people think just because you know Israelites spare people that they get salvation. Sparing somebody is different from getting salvation and being in in the covenant with us, right? So in Joshua, if you want to get Joshua two, and we can start at verse one, just just uh for context, and then we go and go to twelve and read to fourteen. Are you, want right. you want me to read it? Or you want me to read it? No, I got it. I got it. So the book of Joshua, chapter two and verse one. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two, two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came and took an harlot's house named Rehab and lodged there. So, so, so Rahab is not an Israelite, right? So, so the spies went there and she, and she helped the people that went to go spy basically hide out in, in, in her home. So in verse 12, it says, now, therefore, I pray this is this is a her talking swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answer her. So the Israelites. Our life for yours, if ye utter not. So basically, if you don't read, if you don't snitch on us, we gonna spare you. So basically, if she read it, she was gonna her and her household was gonna die. So either way, so how is that salvation, right? And my mother and my brother and my sister's house, right, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. And the men answer her, our our life for yours, if ye utter not. This our business. And it shall be when the Lord have given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. So if she would have read it, it wouldn't have been no saving her household. Right. But since she didn't read, they saved her household. That's still not so that's still not salvation. They just spared her and her family. So I just wanted to bring that out. Just like just like uh, Yahweh Shai spared the lady uh, with her daughter when she was sick. So. Oh, Salaki, y'all hear all the echo art. No, I wanted to hit this point. I don't know if you um if you still got it in the chamber, but um I don't know if you got this in the chamber, but it's a Deuteronomy 26, uh seven and eight. Con, because you know this is not a new thing in the earth. Oh, kind all praises. So this is not a new thing in the earth. 
you know, people think it's a, it's a new thing, like, you know, oh, the, the Lord is going to save all races. Like, he, he saved Israel alone before, and he's going to do it again, right? Um, it's Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse 7. And when we, we being who? The children of Israel. And when we cry unto Yahweh, power of our fathers, Yahweh heard our voice and look on our affliction and our labor and our oppression verse 8 and yahweh brought us forth out of egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great tempers or uh, terribleness and with uh and with signs and with wonders right so the same thing is going to happen again right i mean all 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 the same uh uh destructions the famine that's occurring in, in um in this new modern egypt right we're seeing the plates being uh, done now you know i mean people wearing masks so it's i don't understand why it's such you know a a, a crazy thing you know people think that we got a crazy doctrine that the lord going to save his people the same people that he delivered before he's going to do it again Huh. That woman had to beg, yo. She she really believed. You know what I mean? She believed more than some of the Israelites believed, but she had to work so hard to get some crumbs. All right. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. You on mute, you from here? Okay, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all so these things like so, 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 so it shall come to pass. That means that this is a prophecy. You know, this didn't happen yet. It's going to happen. Go ahead. When all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. So, so the Israelites had to go through the curse of not keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. Right, so this thing wasn't going to happen until after we was going through all this. Go ahead. Which I have set before thee, and thou shall call them to mind among all the nations. We're going to remember. I mean, we're going to be like, oh snap! I, you know, we're we're going to do things that we weren't that we were doing before, right? But in the future, so these things was going to come to our mind while we were in captivity amongst these other nations go ahead uh, among all nations whether yahweh thy power have driven thee verse two and shall return unto yahweh thy power we're gonna and shall we're, we're, we're gonna return to the most high you know i mean so we're gonna remember yeah you know i mean we're gonna have someone telling us the truth we're gonna listen our ears is gonna get perked up because that's how you know the sheep here of the shepherd you know what I mean? So we're going to hear that voice and we're going to remember and we're going to come back to the most high. Go ahead. And shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. So we're going to come back to these law, statutes and commandments in our captivity. While we were scattered amongst all these other nations, we were going to come back to these law, statutes and commandments. Go ahead. Thou and thy children so we was going to Look even forward. be te we was even going to be teaching our kids. We're, we're going to start raising our kids in this, and this is not in the land, right? Because we was doing that in the land. When we was getting scattered amongst these other nations is because we weren't keeping these commandments. So while in this captivity, we're going to come back to the Most High. Go ahead and teach our children. Kind with all thy heart and with all thy soul, right? Because we're going to try our best because in our captivity, that's all we could do. Yeah, you know I mean, they, they got mixed fabrics. They got fake food. They got pork and everything, car, carrageenan and everything. You know what I mean? All we could do is really try our best with fear and trembling. You know what I mean, we can't manufacture our own things. We still have to go to these other nations for all things. Go ahead, bro. Okay. Verse three, that then Yahweh, thy power will turn. Like thy, thy captivity. So he was gonna then then he's gonna turn our captivity. I mean, we're in captivity amongst these other nations. So we're gonna forget who we are, 
I mean, we're going to stop keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. We was going to remember who we are, right? We're going to return back to the Lord, teach our children, do our best to keep these commandments, and then the Most High was going to turn our captivity. I mean, this is where the salvation comes in. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And have compassion. Have compassion upon thee. He's going to have compassion because we turned from him. We was doing all type of abominations. We did everything against what he said. So he's going to have compassion. You know what? I put y'all through a lot. And I see that y'all trying and doing y'all best with all y'all heart and all y'all soul. And y'all turn back to me. And that's the compassion he's going to have. He's going to save us again. Go ahead. And we'll return and gather thee from all the nations. Whether Yahweh thy power have scattered thee. And we got scattered through that transatlantic slave trade. That's you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You know what I mean, we don't know who we are. We got to remember who we are because if those Israel Israelis are the Israelites, how do they know? They want to know. You know what I mean, they, they never had a chance to remember. They're telling us that they're them. You know what I mean, we was going to remember. So let's jump down to seven. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse seven. And Yahweh thy power will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. So that ain't never happened. It, so if all these curses are going to get put upon our enemies, then there will be only one nation that's not going through the curses and all other nations are going through the curses. But as of right now, the Israelites are the only ones going through these curses and all other nations are okay. They don't have to worry about the things that we got to worry about. Right. But when this prophecy comes to pass, when this finally happens, everybody else is going to be under subjugation. Yeah. You know I mean, everybody else is going to be oppressed. It's not happening today. You know I mean, other nations came to America on a free will. You know what I mean? We're stuck here. We can't leave. They're not giving us no plane tickets nowhere. They're not going to accept us nowhere else. So let's go to um, Isaiah 61 and 1. Kind, kind of, I got that. But, bro, too, if I, if I can uh, make uh, uh, one, uh, one uh, preset yeah. point uh, of uh, the, uh, let me get a uh, Psalms, Psalms 1, 126, I believe it is. Um, 126. Kind. Uh, 126, I'm going to start at 1. This is the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 126, and verse 1. When Yahweh turned again the captivity of Zion, we was like them that dream. Right? So when the Lord ends our captivity, it's all going to seem like a dream. Like, when it's all said and done. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's how, like, Biggie was saying when he was, uh, you know, saying it was all a dream. Right? How I used to read Word Up magazine. Like, now I'm out here doing all this stuff. Like, it's a... Uh, all this working nine to five, all this, you know, the labor for another nation, it's all going to seem like a dream. Verse two, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then, and this, and this is really the key part right here. Then said they, but hold up though. I thought God was going to save everybody. So if we getting, getting our captivity again and right, then we going to get saved. Right. And then this is going to be all the other nations outside of Israel. Right. Then said they among the heathen. So, okay, yeah, this is us saying it among them. Yahweh have done great things for them. Right. So that's what's going to be said. It's going to be known. So it's not like, oh, Yahweh did great things for everybody. No, he did it for them and them alone. Come. Yeah. And that, that's all I got. Oh, praise and that's what that's what the salvation is looking like. It's not looking like what they've been teaching you in your everyday church. So let's go to Isaiah 61 and verse one. Because what is the you know, we, we go out there and we teach the gospel. I mean, everybody talks about the gospel. They defend the gospel. So what is the gospel? Con, con, this is the book of Psalm. I'm um, sorry. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 61 um, and verse one. The spirit of Yahweh is upon me. Because Yahweh have anointed me to preach good titans unto the meek. Can, can he have he have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, 
to mm-hmm. proclaim liberty to the captives. So he's gonna he's and he's the- gonna bind up the brokenhearted. I mean that's that's these mothers that's losing their children. You know they're burying their children. I mean that's that's these parents watching their kids fall into you know drug use. You know going into prison. I mean hating the mother, disrespecting each other. You know what I mean? We're the we're the brokenhearted. We don't you know all nations don't gotta worry about these things. You know I mean, go ahead. Time. So lock it and to proclaim liberty to the captives. So that's that's what that salvation is, right? Because that's what salvation is, being saved from their from their captors. You know what I mean, being saved from captivity. So that's what the gospel is: the Israelites being saved from their captivity. Keep going. Turn. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Right. Who's in these prison houses, man? I mean, that's you black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We in prison under the captivity of the so-called white man. I mean, we got to do everything they say. This ain't our world. This is their world. Keep going. Uh, Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh Mm -hmm. and the day of vengeance of our power. Yeah, the day of vengeance. That's that's, That's what the gospel is, man. The day of vengeance of our Lord. That's what that pertains to. So, you know, when we talk about the gospel, we're talking about the salvation of the Israelites coming out of that captivity, man, and watching our most high power come and bring vengeance upon all the all those that afflicted us. Keep going. Come to comfort all that mourn. Who's mourning out here? You don't see the white man mourning out there, man. They mourning because they ain't got enough money to go get high. That's the only thing they mourning about. You know what I mean, we mourning because we losing our we losing each other, man. We losing children. It's eleven year olds getting shot and killed out here, man. Our people are destroyed. Keep going. Time verse three to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. Right to give beauty for nothing because we ain't got nothing. Go ahead. Time. The oil of joy for mourning. Right, because we're not joyful. We're not a joyful people. You know what I mean, you look at our people's faces, they serious when it's breakfast. Like, what you mad at? Breakfast, bro. You know what I mean? Our people are not happy. So we're going to get joy for that, man. Keep going. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness mm-hmm. that they may be called trees of righteousness. Uh-huh. The planning of Yahweh that he may be glad, um, like it may be glorified. And that's what you see, man. You see the Israelites, the so-called blacks and Hispanics out there glorifying his name, man. Through us, he's gonna be glorified. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, he's gonna plant us, he's gonna plant this wisdom and understanding. He's gonna plant us, you know, back in our land, man, for doing his work. Because ain't nobody else glorifying his name in truth, truth and sincerity. They ain't reading these scriptures, right? So let's go to um jump down to five. Kind, kind, all praises. I was just about to uh, say, yeah, definitely the hip hop. All praises. Verse five. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Right. So these strangers is other nations. That ain't our brothers. That ain't our fellow Israelites. Right. These strangers is talking about these other nations. You know? They're going to be feeding our flock. They're going to be doing what we told them to do. Go ahead. Kind. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your binge, uh, your vine dressers. Yeah, do what I told you to do, right? Come. Mm-hmm. Come, verse 6. But ye shall be named the priest of Yahweh. Yeah, you Israelites, man, you blacks and Hispanics, y'all going to be named priests of Yahweh, man, because we're going to be out there putting out this word. We're going to be teaching these other nations. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Keep going. Time. Men shall call you the ministers of God. Yeah, we're going to be the ministers of God because they're, you know, they're we're the ministers of God. All these other nations are going to be doing what we told them to do. You going? Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. We want to take everything, man. What you got? I'm taking that. You know what I mean, you're not eating today. You know what I mean, this food is going for some, you know, this is a snack right here. I mean, this is my snack now. Go ahead. 
mankind. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Right. You know what I mean? We're going to be boasting on, on, on taking all these other nation stuff. You know what I mean? Let's go to um, Psalm 67 and 1. That time is going to come. I mean, karma has to make its way back around. Y'all boasted yourselves with the rape, rob, murder, oppression, you know what I mean, and enslavement of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Y'all was proud to put us in these atrocities that y'all still got us in today. Con, con, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 67 and verse 1. Most high, be merciful unto us and bless us and curse his face to shine as Salaka and cause his face to shine upon us. Right, we're begging. we begging for mercy, man. we begging for his light. You know what I mean? We need help. Keep going. Come, verse 2. That the way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Right, that that the most high was going to be known on this earth through saving us, you mean among these other nations. That's that's how you know that's how we're going to to magnify the name of the Lord, man. And he's going and these other nations going to know that they that you know this is the most high God of Israel, man. Let's go to um let's go to Ezekiel 36 and 20. Did you need this? Con, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36 and verse 20. And when they entered, so like, and when they entered into the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord and are going forth out of his land right because we, we got scattered we, we left jerusalem go ahead verse 21 but i had pity for my holy name which the house of israel had profaned among the even where did they went right because that's that's why we started going through these things that's why we fell into these curses keep going verse 22 therefore Say unto the house of Israel, thus saith Yahweh, I do not this for your sakes. He ain't doing this for our sake. Right. The house of Israel ain't doing this for the Israelites' sakes. Who, who are you doing this for? Oh, house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake. Right, because this is for him. Yeah, you know I mean, everything is to glorify him. That's why we could go through whatever we go through, whatever the most high put us through. He can put us through that. You know what I mean, but through us, you know what I mean, he's going to glorify his name, man. It's not for us, it's for everybody to know who he is. He won't, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye went. Verse 23 And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned. In the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh. They're going to know that they're going to know Yahweh by our salvation. They're going to be. This is how they're going to know him. So how are the heathen going to be a part of this? How can the heathen be a part of this salvation if they're going to find out who Yahweh is through our salvation? Keep going. Turn. Say if Yahweh, when I shall be sanctified. In you before their eyes. He's gonna be sanctified in us, man. Let's go to Ezekiel 39 and 21. You know what I mean? His name is gonna become holy, right? That's what sanctify means, holy. So he's gonna separate his name from everybody else. That's what holy means. You know what I mean? And he's gonna make us holy. He's gonna separate, separate us from all these other nations. Nations. I appreciate it. Go ahead, bring, bring out your preacher. 
Yeah, this is uh Judges chapter two and verse one. I'll wait for you to pull it up. Yeah, it says, and, it, and an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochem and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land, which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. So where is he dealing with other nations? Where is he dealing with, with other people? You feel me? Sorry, but go ahead, bro. That was it. <laughs> He ain't going to um, he ain't going to break his promise, man. He promised us the land. He promised us rulership. He promised us the kingdom. He ain't going to break he that covenant. As long as we, as long as we, as long as we um, you know, keep our part of the covenant. Go ahead, bro. So lucky, yeah. lucky. You said 37 and 20 or 39. 39 or 21. I thought my Bahar had something to say. Oh, so lucky. Okay, then. This is the book of uh, Ezekiel, chapter 39 and verse 21. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. Nah, see, they're going to think, oh, it's a hand of salvation. I mean, let's see what that word judgment means. Right. All right. Right. See the judgment, right? Litigation. Um, execution, right? What's that? Let me see. Justice. What justice look like? There ain't been no justice for you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? Sod in the case, right? Execution. Right? So how the law is done away with if you're getting a judgment? What are you judging? Was a word I was looking for. I don't know what happened. What that that judgment? Right. So um, where was we at? Uh, twenty two. Can't read. Can't Slide. Let me uh, let me look at this again. Maybe maybe um. Yeah. Well, you know, I want to get it. I thought I was gonna find a better word for judgment, but that's execution, man. Yeah, you know I mean, you already know what judgment is. You're gonna get receive a sentencing. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna reap what you sold. So keep keep going. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 30, um, 39 and verse twenty two. So the house of Israel shall know that I am Yahweh, their power. From that day and forward. So so you Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, y'all gonna know that that's y'all God after he bring judgments to these other nations, man. That's when y'all gonna turn it down. That's when that's when y'all finally gonna get it. Yeah, you know I mean, oh, this is my God and none else is when the most high is judging everybody else. Keep going. Okay. Verse 23, and the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Yep. Because they trespassed, um, trespassed, trespassed against me. Therefore, hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword right that's what happened man we fell into these curses the most high let these other we had to serve these other nations because we stopped keeping these law statutes and commandments so the most high turned his face from us so let's go to romans 1 and 16 
but these healing going to witness our salvation though. So if the heathen are witnessing it, that means they're not partaking in it. They're just watching it happen. Oh, it's consistent that Israel is going to be saved, though. It's inconsistent to say that these other nations will be saved with us. The Bible will be contradicted. Okay. This is the book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Hamashiach. For it is the power of the Most High unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Oh, man, here we go. So let's see what this is about. Keep going. Come on. Verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of the Most High revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Right, and the just, you know, is always keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. So, um, when, when we dealing with the, I mean, all these apostles was dealing with these people, whether it was the Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Thessalonians, or the Colossians, they was speaking to a particular audience, right? So when we say we go back and we say um, salvation to everyone that believeth, right? It's everyone that's partaking in this audience, everyone that's listening to the speaker, everyone that received this letter, right? So if I sent you a letter, can my neighbor take it and make it part of his self? You can't do that, right? So these are the things we got to keep in mind when we talking about all people. It's not talking about everybody in the earth. You know what I mean? If, I, if, I'm, if, I, if we had camp and I say, you know, I'm paying, you know, bottles bottles you know bottles for all all of y'all yeah i mean bottles for all of y'all bottles for everybody right yeah i mean on a on a on a um on a celebration right does that mean everybody in the world is getting it no yeah i mean all of y'all means all of y'all that's here so we got to keep this in mind let's go to romans let's go up to verse seven kind the book of romans chapter one and verse seven to all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High, called to be saints. So all that be in Rome, right? So we're saying all, oh, does that mean everybody? No, we're talking about the ones that's called to be saints. Go ahead. Okay. Called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from the, the Most High, our Father. Right, so... So... So this letter was written to the Israelites, right? So let's go. Slakia, finish that out. Slakia. Slakia. Grace to you and peace from the, the Most High, our Father, and the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Right. So let's go to Psalms 15 and 5 because we got to see who these saints are because he's writing to the saints, all that be in Rome, called to be saints, right? So who are these saints? Uh, the book of Psalms. Chapter 50 and verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So the saints are those who made a covenant with the most high by sacrifice. Let's go to Exodus 24 and 3. It's like I got everybody to make that point. Con. Exodus 24 and 3. You said 20 and verse 3 or 24? 24, 24 verse 3. The book of Exodus, chapter 24 and verse 3. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh and all the judgments. This is all the law, law statutes, and commandments, and the judgments that come with these law statutes, and commandments, right? Con. And all the people answered with one voice and said all the words which Yahweh have said we will do right so this is all the all the people right all the people answered with one voice who is all these people that's the audience and who's the audience all these people are israelites right these are who made this covenant with the most high 
right? And they 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 signed that contract. They agreed to that contract. Keep going. Come verse four, and Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. So that's letting you know that you're dealing with the 12 tribes of Israel, you know, dealing with this covenant that was made, right? Moses went and he made a he made a um he made an altar to to make this sacrifice. Keep going. Verse 5. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sanctified um, and sacrificed peace offerings. Of ox unto Yahweh. I'm just saying this is this is that covenant. Go ahead. Verse six. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in a in a basin, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Keep on. Verse seven. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said. All that Yahweh have said, we will do, and be obedient. So this is this is the saints. These are the saints that made a covenant with the Most High by a sacrifice. They are the Israelites, right? So when we go back, and they say all that being Rome in Romans one and seven, all that's in Rome, right? Beloved of God, called to be saints. He's talking to the Israelites. This is the audience that he's dealing with. So when we talk about all people. I mean, you're talking about all the people that's involved in the situation. It's not all the people in the earth. So let's go to um. You had a you had a a point for Damiala. Khan, um, further proving the salvation only pertaining to Israel, um, more specifically the saints of and in Israel, right? I'm gonna get Psalms 97 and verse 10. You want me to read it or you want to read it? Come, I can read it. Psalms 1, uh, 97 and verse 10. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He that preserveth the souls of his saints, he delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Right? So time and time again, we can see those uh, uh, keeping the commandments, right, are going to be saved out this place, right? Uh, and if Baba Gashah, you can go into the strongs of that word preserveth. All right, because I want to make a point back off that. Come. The right. word is Shamar. It's like you got it, bro, if you, if you can see it. Come. Right. Now, when we look right under, uh, what's that? That double I, right? All the way at the end, it says save life, right? And if you scroll up a little bit, um, it says the word can also be... Uh, used as save right so he saves the souls of his saints right and he saves them out of the hand of the wicked right so um the saints of israel basically right gonna be saved out this place right and we know that's keeping the commandments uh and the, keeping the faith of Mashiach. that's what that salvation is man it's for the israelites nobody else needs to be saved which i need to be saved from Let's go to Romans chapter 10 and verse 11. It's consistent with Israel. I mean, I don't see these other nations when it comes to prophecy. Yeah, I mean, it's not according to the Bible when you talk about saving these other nations. Turn. 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 10 and 12. 10 and 11. It's a lot the book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 11. For the scriptures say it, whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. Right, this whosoever again, right? We're dealing with all people, right? And we got to all people, we went back to see that we was dealing with the saints, right? And the saints was all those who was there that made the covenant, right? So whosoever believeth, right, on him shall not be ashamed. Keep going. Verse 12. For there... There's no difference between the Jew 
and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. There ain't no difference between Jew and Greek because the Greek is just a citizenship. You know, the, the, the nationality of the people who was in rulership in the Greeks were the Edomites. They weren't in biblical nationalities, the Greeks, right? So we were just being citizens of Greeks. There was multiple nationalities in there. So when he's dealing with no difference between Jew or Greek, you're not dealing. There's no difference between someone who's living in the land of Jerusalem and Judea or the or the Israelite that's living amongst the Greeks. Keep going. Come verse. Uh, verse thirteen, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right, so let's see if whosoever is whosoever. All right, let's go to Joel 2 and 32. Because everything in the New Testament refers back to the Old Testament. Okay. okay, let's look at Joel chapter 2 and verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall whosoever call. Again, right? so, so this is the whosoever. Yeah, you know I mean, so if whosoever over there in in romans is talking about everybody whosoever here in joel should be talking about everybody as well it's like yeah can you start that again come the book of joel chapter 2 and verse 32 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be delivered right same kind same wording right for in mount zion and in jerusalem shall be deliverance so it's whosoever in mount zion and in, in jerusalem so this will be you would have to cancel this prophecy if, if we're going to say that all of a sudden it's all nations it's saying whosoever in mount zion and jerusalem that's you israelites keep going huh as yahweh have has said and in the remnant of whom yahweh shall call Right, because there's only going to be a remnant that's going to be saved, right? So that remnant is going to be the Israelites. Let's go to John 3 16. Because yeah. we're dealing with whosoever. No, it's whosoever believeth in God, they'll be saved, right? No, uh, this is the book of John, chapter 3 and verse 16. It's like it in verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. All right, so we want, you know, yeah, the church will tell you, you know, that means everybody. So let's get some context. Let's go up to 14. Come, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so when Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, that was just amongst the Israelites. Yeah, you know I mean, so Yahweh Shah is likening himself until unto the serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness. Right? Keep going. Okay. Even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Right, because that serpent had to be risen in order to heal the Israelites. Right. So in order. So Yahweh Shah is going to be risen to heal the Israelites. This is why Yahweh Shah is likening himself unto this serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness. Right. Keep going. Come. Come. Come to lock it, too. And I got the uh, I got the account in, uh, in numbers, too, if you want that. Um, uh, come. Finish that out on um, 15 and then let's go to numbers. Come. John uh, 3 and 15, that that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. So we see everlasting life and we see. But go ahead. Bring out your precept real quick. Let's let's go into that. Oh, kind of the count. It's, uh, it's numbers 21 and um, start at uh, verse six. Huh. This is the book of this is the book of Numbers, chapter twenty one, and verse six. And Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people, 
and they bit the people and much people of Israel died. Okay. Right, so so, okay. slot. so that's that fiery serpent. I mean, them fiery okay. serpents slop you. The Most High sent these serpents on the Israelites for complaining. Right, they were scoffing with the Mo uh, with Moses, like we, you know, we was doing better over here. You know what I mean? They they was talking shit, right? So, as punishment, the Most High sent these serpents to them. They bit the people, and they got you know a lot of people had died from that. Yeah, I mean, like this was this was an epidemic right here. Keep going. Okay. Verse seven. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, "We have sinned." That's why the Most High did that because they first off they lost the faith. Yeah, I mean, they lost that fear of the Most High because you got to have faith that He's gonna bring judgment on you. That's that's where that fear come in. Yeah, you know I mean, and keeping these law, statutes, and commandments shows that you fear the Most High. Right. So our people were sinning against the Mosai because they ain't really take this serious. They want to go back into slavery. It sounds like a lot of our people when we be dealing with them on the highways and byways. They just real comfortable in where they at. Keep going. Okay. For we have spoken against Yahweh and against thee. Pray unto Yahweh that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. This is the point, though, the point in, uh, in 8. Verse 8, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And when, and when, oh, you got it, bro. You got, you got it, bro. Oh, so like it. You know I mean, and, it, and, it, and you see how the brother is eloquently bringing out in John 3.16, which this is the only verse that they know in the whole chapter, but why did Christ bring up this story of Moses uh um and um with the fiery serpent? Right. I'm matter of fact, I'm gonna go back to John um three and uh 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 fifteen where uh, bro just had me read. This is the book of John chapter three and verse fifteen. That whosoever uh so like I'm reading fourteen, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up because the same way that Moses lifted up that staff for the children of Israel in the wilderness and everyone that was faithful because all the Israelites was, was not faithful and looked upon that staff but everyone that will look upon that staff so Christ is saying the same way that Moses held up that staff that's the same way that Christ got to get lifted up and all Israel that's supposed to is going to look at him right and then and then, and then they get healed they hit the ones who believe ah, and, and them fiery serpents being sent against y'all again that's that's your own people man you got snakes you know among, amongst your own people y'all killing each other you know what i mean and and we need to be healed from that we need to come back to the most high and be saved from this life that we live in the only thing that we know i mean only thing we know is poverty oh only thing we know is the ghetto you know what i mean and we need some, somebody to come and help us. Martin Luther King tried it. You know, a whole bunch of people tried it. It's evident that we need a savior. Our people need a savior. So if we need a savior and nobody else needs a savior in the way we do, why do they participate in that? Where is there a promise? To that? Right. So go back to 316. Finish that out at 316. Okay, this is the book of John, chapter 3. And verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, right, but so have sloppy. Come, but, but have everlasting life. Right. So we see um world, we see everlasting life, right? So let's see what what that's talking about. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 17. Whosoever, right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. So now we see everlasting. 
the everlasting life, man. That's the everlasting mm -hmm. salvation. And that whosoever is whosoever amongst Israel. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Right. So, so this, this world, the Israelites are the world that salvation pertains to. Right. Let's go to Hebrews 1 and 1 to see because how can Israel be the world, right? How are y'all the world, right? Because y'all don't understand what world is. Come, come. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 1 and verse 1. The Most High, who in sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2. Have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Right, he made the worlds, man. Yahweh Shah made worlds. So there can't be one world, right? Keep going. Okay. Slaki, no, we're we gonna keep it right there. So these are the worlds, yeah. You know I mean. Yeah, the Israelites are the world that pertains to the salvation. You know what I mean? That the worlds of you know, God so loved the world is the world of the Israelites. There's multiple worlds. You know what I mean, you go to China, they live in a whole nother world over there, man. You know what I mean, we can't we can't find something in common over there. You know what I mean, when you deal with these other nations, that's a that's out of your out of your zone. You're not familiar with this. So if it's new to you, this is a new world over here. Come so in, all these other nations got their own world. And we're the world that the Most High is dealing with. I mean, God so God's so blessed. Blessed. Hey, Khan, too, bro. If I can make a point, right? Come, come. And that lets you know that it's, it's multiple worlds, like even like with just saying stuff like that, like because I live on Diamond. So... I be telling y'all every time I come, I come over the bridge to come to Diamond. It's like I'm coming into a new world because it's so because it's so weird out here and it's like really in the trenches. So I just be like, it it it, it, it look different compared to all different parts of the city. Uh -huh. So come, 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 that just goes come, to come. show that all the all that that is like multiple worlds and all the worlds aren't the same. I mean, depending on context and what you mean. <laughs> Right, because if I if I take a trip down Jersey and come back to North Philly, it's like yo, uh, everything done changed, man. The house has changed, trash all over the place now. It's like what type of world is these people living in? All right. So let's go to um, kind of come um, bro. So I got one more uh, uh precept though on uh world and just uh, a real quick uh point. I mean, just to uh, land back off of what these brothers are uh, saying, um, my precept is going to be a wisdom of Solomon, uh, 18 and verse 24. But just to land back off of what uh, brothers are saying, it's it's like like people get ignorant when it comes to the scriptures, and they and they, then they want to isa Jesus one uh, scripture, right? But anything else in the world, I mean, <laughs> well, it, that that's how they be. Like anything else in this in this you know in this world, like. Like, all right, for instance, like when you see a sister, like you could be like, all right, I'm going to rock your world. You're not talking about her, like her sister. You're talking about her person. Like, yeah, I rock her world. Like, come on now. Like, you know what I mean, like it's 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 just common understanding. But but when it comes to scriptures, like if they just want to, it's just add everybody a type spirit. But Salak and not the ramble one, but um. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 24. For in the long garment was the whole world, and in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the fathers engraved, and the majesty upon the diadem of his head, right? It's talking about his crown, right? And it's obviously, you know, where it's talking about the four rows, right? Yeah, I mean, it's talking about of Israel, right? Four rows leading into the twelve o'clock. Um, I'll read again. It's uh, Wisdom of Solomon eighteen and verse twenty-four. 
Kind of, I'm going to read again. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 24. For in the long garment was the whole world, right? In the priest's garment, right? And in the four rows of stones was the glory of the fathers engraved and the majesty upon the diadem of his head, right? Because it says four rows because it's what? Three, three is six, and then three, three, one more times equal what? It's 12. It's four rows of three, right? Representing each tribe separated three uh, times. Well, you know, four rows of three tribes. But that's that's considered as the whole world, right? So the priest had the whole world, the whole what? Whole what world of Israel, right? And his garment. Uh, let's go to Acts 2 and 21. Con, yeah, I'm, uh, I got that too. Con, this is the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, right? Con, verse 22. Ye men of Israel. Hear these words. You men of Israel hear these words, man. Whosoever of you men of Israel. That's what it's talking about. It's, uh, it's like I want a precept. It's, it's in Second Ezra. It talks about. Right. Same. I don't know if I'm gonna find it. Nine or seventeen. You know, you, know, you know how I go, and I find it. Um, it's saying how the world was created for for us. Um. Close to lucky. I know don't that. Be, don't be don't be cons don't be concerned about how the godly the ungodly will be. Um. Right. Oh, kind of, no. The um, the world was made for our sakes. It's six. What is around six and fifty-five? Us, uh, yeah, kind. Of, uh, the world was made for it's our nine sakes. Nine and thirteen slot. Oh, kind, of, kind, of, kind. Of, that's something. Oh, kind. Of. Second Ezra is nine. And what verse? Mm -hmm. 9 and 13. Okay, this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 13. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. And when, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Right. Who's the world is? Whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who the world, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. The righteous can only be the Israelites because the righteous, the, the Israelites got the law, statutes, and commandments, and the Most High only dealing with the Israelites. According to the Most High, these other nations are nothing, and they are like unto spittle, right? Cool. So the godly amongst the Israelites, this is who the world is, and whom the world is created for. So when we talking about the world, we're talking about the Israelites. I mean, that's just to prove. So let's go to um let's go to Acts five and thirty one. Con okay. okay. this is the book of Acts, chapter five and verse thirty one. Him have the most high exalted with his right hand. To be a prince and a savior for to give repentance. Shah, so called Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Come. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Repentance is for Israel. Forgiveness of sins is for Israel. This does not include everybody. I mean, people want to add to this word. People want to be like, oh, this is for everybody. No, it says it plain as day. It's to give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins. 
we're going to get for, forgiven if we come back to these law, statutes, and commandments and come back to the Most High. And then we're going to be, you know, redeemed out of our captivity. Let's go to Acts 28 and 20. Because because this was after that the apostles was told to go into all um into the to all nations. You know what I mean? Okay, this is the book of Acts, chapter 28 and verse 20. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you. Because for that, because like it, because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with these chains. Right. So Paul, Paul got was getting persecuted, you know, for, for teaching the Israelites and giving hope to the Israelites. You know what I mean, teaching them the gospel because the gospel is being saved from your enemies. This is for Israel. Right. And for the vengeance of the day of the Lord. So so Paul, Paul teaching this amongst the Israelites, you mean, and he's getting bound in chains. He's getting persecuted for doing this. He knew what was going on. You know what I mean? Paul know what's up. He's not teaching something contrary to the doctrine. Oh. Let's go to let's go to Isaiah 60 and 10. Uh, and this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And their kings shall minister unto thee. For right. in my so wrath. It's, it's locked. So these sons of strangers, there's going to be these other nations. They're going to build up our walls. They're going to build up our kingdom. Right. So salvation is Israelites being saved, being put into the rightful position, into the land, into rulership. Right. That's what the kingdom is. And these strangers, these other nations that have nothing to do with us, that has nothing to do with Israel. They're going to be building our kingdom. You know I mean, they're going to be be building our homes. They're going to be building, you know, our our stores, our place, of, you know, a farming and all that. They're going to be doing all that. So how are they being saved? Sa salvation does not include them anywhere. Keep going. Uh, for in my wrath, I smote thee. But in my favor, have I had mercy on thee. Right, he had mercy on the Israelites. Keep going. Uh, verse 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto unto thee the forces of the gentiles the forces of the gentiles all their possessions you know everything that they own man everything that matters to them even their family their children they're going to be bringing them to the israelites these gates are going to be open for y'all to put in servitude man keep going Done, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. Yeah, man, that's y'all high Edomites, man. Y'all high level Edomites, man. Y'all gonna be brought in chains. Y'all had a good time while it lasted, and now it's time for y'all to work. Keep going. Turn. Verse 12 For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. It's get down or lay down. When it comes to these other nations, where's salvation? How how does that look? You other nations got to get down and lay down. You're going to die. Keep going. Yay. Those nations shall be utterly wasted. Keep going. Turn. Verse 13. The glory of the Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fig tree, the pine tree, and the box together. To beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 14 The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And we get that all the time. Yeah, you know I mean, we get that when we out there. They're already bending down to us. This is already a prelude of what's going to happen. That's right. You know what I mean, and we don't pick them back up. We let them tip over and roll on the floor. And that's what's going to happen. 
You know I mean, all those that have oppressed us, you know I mean, they're going to be bending and bowing down to us. Go ahead. And all that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Mm -hmm. And they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. We the children of Israel, man. The Holy One of Israel. This is what this is what salvation is. Salvation is for you, Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. These other nations are going into slavery. These other nations are going to get broken into pieces. We can show you end time prophecy that these nations are going to go through too. So if these nations are going to be utterly destroyed. <clears throat> if if Moab is going to be a wash pot, if if Esau is going to be a um. It's going to have a thousand years in slavery and then they're going to be utterly destroyed. Yeah, you know I mean, where where can they partake? How was that? Whosoever means everybody. Y'all taking things out of context and you can't you black Hispanics and Americans can't let them weaponize this against us. Don't let them think and just accept these other nations. They want you to accept them. Huh? We don't accept them. We're going against their rulership and we're going to take their rulership. We're not going to the, the kingdom is not going to be handed to us. The kingdom is going to be taken by force. And that's what our salvation is, man. That's what our kingdom is. So Slug, anybody bro, got anybody Oh, Slucky. Yeah, Bubba okay. Kashaw, we that, that that's the end of I mean, I ain't got nothing else. So if y'all bring out everything y'all could. Con, I got some. Okay, you can go, bro. Come, um, it's Isaiah sixty-two and verse eleven. It says, "Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world: Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh." Right. So, uh, us Israelites, right, our salvation is coming. Right. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. Verse 12. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, uh, called sought out, a city not forsaken. Right? So our salvation is coming. It's coming swiftly. Um, and it's only for us. Right? Um, and they got these heathens shaking in their boots right now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Kind of, kind of, if I, and, I, and if I can ask this uh, question, you know, for any of the uh, the listeners, you know I mean, like, if they if they can uh, answer this, if they if they perceive that salvation is for all races, I want them to uh, answer this uh, scripture, uh, Isaiah chapter two, chapter two. Um, I'm only just gonna read verse two, right? If they if they can answer if they can answer this 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 will help out a lot, right? If salvation is for everybody. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 2 and verse 2. And it shall come to pass, like just like how the bro said, right, Sharat? Like just like how he said, this is future contents, right? It's not talking about right now, right? And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, right? So it's not going to be no equal fitting, right? You know what I mean? And, it's going to be other nations, but the Lord's mountain, right, or us, right, because the mountain is government, right, so the Lord's mountain shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, right? So these other nations, they won't even look like a mountain, basically, like, or or a true, yeah, you know I mean, like, like their government won't, it pales in comparison to us. This is why it's given the, the comparison of that they're going to have a, that we're going to have a, a great mountain and they're just going to their their mountain is going to look like hills right um and the mountain shall be as um and the house shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it right and it's not saying that oh we're still going to be equal just because they're going to flow into it when you read further down it says that all the nations is going to beat their swords and their spears into uh, plowshares and into hooks. And when you go into that, that's talking about garden uh, tools, right? So they're going to give up fighting and war making, 
right, for being workers. That's what they're going to do. They're going to give up that that warmonger type of mindset to end up being a, a garden workers. Kind of. And going back to how, you know, they're not even going to look like mountains no more. They won't, you know, they won't look like hills. They ain't even going to look like a nation no more. That's like watching a movie and you see how it's a whole bunch of so-called white people in a movie. And all of a sudden you got a so-called black pop up. You know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, snap, they got black people in the movie, right? That's how it's going to be. They're going to be like hills. They're just going to be popping up here and there. I got a preset. Somebody got a preset. I'll say at 46 and 13. Right? It says, I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off, like brother was saying, man. That thing coming. And my salvation shall not tarry. He's not gonna hold that thing up. When it's time to release, you know, release them lions, man. Them lions gonna get released. He ain't gonna hold on to that leash no more. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. I mean, it's cutting dry, man. Anybody else got anything else to say? Bring out. Uh, All right, man. Yeah, I mean, it's so much more we could get into. Yeah, I mean, it's so much prophecy. It's so much judgment. It's not most high not dealing with these other people. That's right. Let's get that real quick since we got time. Matter of fact, I think I do got one more. Great that Psalms one forty seven. Yeah, yeah. He already know through the spirit. <laughs> All right. Psalms one forty seven and verse nineteen. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, laws, man. These words, these prophecies, man. These secrets. He show that unto Jacob, Israel. And his judgments, right? He have not dealt so with any other nation. These other nations don't understand what's going on. They can't understand what's going on because he didn't show it to them. And as for and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. They don't know these curses. They don't know what it is to fear for our life when we walk outside and have no assurance whether we want to live or not. I mean, they don't got an evil eye towards their brother. They ain't got holes in a bag. They ain't putting money into holes with bags. You know what I mean? Living paycheck to paycheck. I get paid. I get broke. You know what I mean? We we living in such tight communities. You know what I mean? That if somebody next door had a shooting, you know, in a house, it would come into our house. That's how tight these houses is, man. Ain't got nothing to do with you. Straight bullets going through the house from your neighbors. We, we live in, in dung hills, man. These other these other nations don't understand his judgment. Oh, cool. cool. come, come, bro. Yeah, I got, uh, I got one. I got one in uh, in wisdom of Solomon, wisdom of Solomon, uh, one. I'm just read uh, uh one and two. Well, uh, Salaki, wisdom of Solomon, chapter five, verse one and uh, two. Salaki. Yeah, so it's, it's 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 going it's going it's going to come out though the the, the truth is always going to be exalted right yeah you know i mean like i mean and 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 for these uh these uh bugged out crazy people well you know you can have your truth i can have my truth bro listen right one has to be true right right you can't say right two plus two equals eight and i'm saying two plus two equals four somebody has to be right somebody has to be wrong so I mean, let's let's get to let's get to the nit and gritty. Like, I mean, what what really is? It? But this is a book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter five and verse one. Then shall the righteous man and we and we see from the brother just bringing out that scripture who who the righteous person is, a person who does the law, statutes, and commandments. Well, who was given the law, statutes, and commandments? The Israelites. So only we can be righteous, right? So then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face. Of such as have afflicted him and made no accounts of his labors. 
when they see it, when who? When 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 the people that he worked and labored for, right, and made they made no accounts of it, when they when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, right? Not all of their salvation, right? You got certain people gonna be looking at other people getting saved, but it's strange, right? The strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that we look for, right? Because a lot of times these niggas is, just, is looking for everybody to be saved and they're going to be terribly, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a surprise. Somebody's lying. Uh, Somebody's lying. Either, either, the salvation salvation is for, either salvation is for everybody. Yeah, you know I mean, or salvation is only for Israel. And I, I don't see the Bible. You know, his Bible say one thing. Man say another. You know what I mean? God, and, and it's like, like Jeremiah said, how can you say, oh, you have your truth and I have my truth. Okay, if if you have the truth and I have the truth, where is the false and the, the falseness in between that? So if we both have the truth and there's no need for the Bible, there's no need for the books or nothing. If we both just have the truth. I mean, that it, it just don't make no sense. Yeah, it was crazy. I said they say, you know, like that everybody can't be speaking the truth. Man. Somebody's a liar here. I can't have my truth. And, and then I tell you that this is the truth and you agree to it. Yeah, that is the truth. And be like, oh, that's just somebody's truth. It's not everybody's truth. No, this is this Bible is the truth of you black, Hispanic and Native Americans. This is your truth. This don't belong to everybody. This is your history. You know what I mean, this is your family. This is your God. And it's proof, man. We live in we live in it. We we live in, you know, these law, statutes and commandments. It's not hard. You're just making excuses. And we know the beautiful works of the most high, man. I mean, he give you everything that you need. And we're, we got everything we need, man. So, yeah, I mean, take some notes. Yeah, I mean, go to church to see a Christian pastor on Sunday and be like, hey, what does this mean? I heard these Israelites talking about this. I never heard this before. Can you break it down? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and see how that goes. Anybody, anybody got got any? Uh, 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 what you know about waking up from a whole lifetime of living savage? Right. Spirit on you till you go to the highways and byways and bend up to the marriage. Right, Turn back or otherwise perish. Right, you ain't always got a busted glass. No. But this here ain't for everybody. If you ain't with it, then get up the block. Crack your fucking head, leave a husky knot. We ain't all about love, nigga. You looking at ex gang members, ex convicts, and ex drug dealers. Yeah. Everything is a balance with us. When yeah. the teacher speaking, it's a silence with us. Cause yeah. we real soldiers for your Howard Shaw. Other false gods don't want no challenge with no. us. Islam and Christianity is the biggest drug that's known. On the right. Take heed before you OD and then bug out to a hopeless fate. The most high, he don't make mistakes. Uh -huh. We don't want a slice, we gonna take the cake. Yeah. We can't wait until the kingdom come. You need reservations to get in them gates. I'm a soldier. Soldiers, I'm on the block with some soldiers. I'm talking precept holders. What your game up like soldiers? Soldiers, soldiers. We moving wiser than cobras. Sicarius, Lakosha, Nosher. Or a 